Hi boys and girls, welcome back to another lesson about the history of the earth. Welcome to lesson four, where we are again learning about the earth inside out. Here we go. As always, let's start with some words we need to know. The first word we're gonna talk about is destructive. Destructive means causing damage. An example of this is, he was a very destructive puppy and often ate through shoes and slippers. Our next word is geysers. Geysers are places on earth where hot water and steam shoot up from the inside the earth onto its surface. An example of this, many people travel to see the geysers in Yellowstone National Park. Our next word to listen for is lava. Lava is magma that has come out onto the Earth's surface. An example of this is after the lava rushed down the mountainside, it began to cool and harden. And our last word to listen for is magma. Magma is molten rock that is deep inside the mantle of the Earth. An example of this is, the hot magma slowly made its way to the Earth's crust. Boys and girls, let's discuss what we've learned so far. Remember that heat causes magma to move around in the mantle and sometimes rise up through the surface of the crust. Remember what happens when magma rises up through cracks in the crust? It creates a volcano. We have learned three very important words from our friend Jerry the geologist. They are heat, pressure, and time. We all know what heat is. Heat's from the sun or something that's hot. We can feel that pressure. If you put your hands together and push against them, you will feel pressure and time. We know how to tell time with a clock, but remember, we are not talking about minutes or even hours. We are talking about very long lengths of time, billions of years. These three important words, heat, pressure, and time, are important when studying geology. They cause many changes to the earth. Boys and girls, magma and lava are kind of confusing things to remember. Magma is molten rock or melted rock that is deep inside the mantle. Heat and pressure cause it to move. When the pressure is too much, the magma is forced out onto the Earth's surface. Lava is magma that has come out onto the Earth's surface. When magma is forced up through cracks in the Earth's crust and erupts out onto the surface, it is called lava. Lava is red orange material that can be seen in this image coming out of the volcano. Today, I'd like you to listen carefully to learn more about volcanoes and to learn about geysers. Before we start our learning, let's review where are we? Remember, we know all about our solar system and that we live on planet Earth. We live on the continent, North America. The country we live in is the United States of America or the USA. Our state is Pennsylvania. We live in the city of Erie. And then there's you, a very important part of our planet Earth. Now let's listen carefully. Ah, Hawaii. I just love this place, says Jerry the geologist. The land is beautiful, the people are friendly, the weather is perfect, and the surfing is terrific. Personally, however, my favorite part of Hawaii is the volcanoes. 
If you like volcanoes, and all geologists do, then there is really no better place than Hawaii. When most people think of volcanoes, they think of the top blowing off of a mountain and lava flowing out everywhere. Volcanic activity actually comes in many different forms, not all of which are as spectacular as a mountaintop eruption or explosion. Hawaii is made up of eight major islands, seven of which are inhabited. If a place is inhabited, that means people live there. The islands of Hawaii are formed by volcanic activity. In other words, if it weren't for volcanoes, Hawaii would not be there at all. Hawaii is one of the best known volcanic hotspots in the whole world. A hotspot is a place where there has been continuous volcanic activity for a long time. In Hawaii's case, the volcanic activity started underwater. In fact, most volcanic activity occurs underwater, deep down near the ocean floor. Down there, the crust is fairly thin, so it is easier for magma to seep up from the mantle. When a volcano erupts underwater, the lava it releases cools very quickly. Over time, millions of years, this lava piles up. It takes a very long time for lava to pile up into mountains. That is what happened in Hawaii. Over time, the lava continually erupting from the hot spot built up a pile that now reaches from the deep ocean floor all the way to the ocean surface where it became new dry land. Hawaiian volcanoes erupt gradually or little by little. The lava bubbles and gurgles and sputters rather than shooting up out of the earth all at once. There is still plenty of volcanic activity on some Hawaiian islands, which means the island chain is still growing. Now let's compare the Hawaiian volcano to another type of volcano, this kind where a mountaintop explodes. This volcano erupted in the state of Washington, which is on the west coast of the United States. This is what Mount St. Helen looked like until the year 1980. Mount St. Helens proves that it is generally fairly easy to predict where a volcano will erupt. The hard part is figuring out when. Mount St. Helens has erupted many times over the course of 40,000 or so years, and during this time, the mountain's size and shape has changed. Magma is constantly building up within Mount St. Helens. Unlike the magma in the Hawaiian volcanoes, however, the magma in this area is much stickier, so it does not gurgle and sputter through little vents. Instead, the magma gets stuck. An incredible pressure builds up within the mountain. Eventually, the pressure becomes so intense that the mountain cannot hold it anymore, and boom! Pressure caused the volcano to erupt. The eruption of Mount St. Helens was the most destructive volcanic eruption in U.S. history. Hundreds of homes were destroyed and thousands of acres of forest were leveled or flattened when this mighty volcano erupted. In an instant, the top of one side of the mountains were literally blown away. Lava was not the main problem with Mount St. Helens. Rather, it was the immense amount of rock and ash that exploded into the air, as well as the landslides that followed as the mountain came crashing down into the valley below. This is what Mount St. Helens looked like today. It's still tall enough to rise above the clouds, but if you compare this to the first picture you saw, you can see that it is not the same mountain it used to be. Mount St. Helens 
has erupted several more times after that day in 1980, and it still erupts occasionally to this day. Here is another place in the United States where there is lots of volcanic activity. This place is called Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is mostly in Wyoming, with parts of it extending into Idaho and Montana. Yellowstone National Park is home to many interesting and beautiful sites. Like Hawaii, Yellowstone is situated on top of a hot spot, a place where there is lots of magma close to the surface. In Yellowstone, the magma has stayed underground and has not erupted onto the surface. Yellowstone is famous for its geysers. A geyser is a rare geologic event that occurs when water seeps down through cracks into the crust and meets up with hot rocks. When the water touches the hot rocks, it turns into steam. Heat causes the liquid water to become a gas called steam, like the steam that comes out of a hot bowl of soup. As more water seeps in, more steam is created and pressure begins to build. Eventually, all this steam and pressure force the steam to find a way back out. Heat and pressure cause geysers to erupt. As in other types of volcanic activity that you have learned about, this process is caused by the buildup and release of pressure underground. The result is a geyser, steam and water spewing out of the earth. These particular geysers are relatively small. They spurt and bubble all day long in water pools or springs which have a pretty bluish-green color created by certain minerals that collect there. This geyser has a name. It's called Old Faithful. The word faithful means trustworthy or reliable. Old Faithful got its name because you can count on the fact that it is going to erupt several times each day. It is not possible to predict exactly when it will erupt, but it typically blows its lid about every 90 minutes, give or take a few. Old Faithful spews out steam and hot water for anywhere from one to five minutes. It can spew as much as eight thousand gallons of water up to 185 feet in the air. Every day during the summer when the park is full of visitors, hundreds of people gather around to watch the world's most famous geyser. Although they come in many forms, shapes, and sizes, all volcanoes and geysers have two things in common. They are the Earth's way of releasing heat and pressure from deep underground. And each one tells us a little more about the history of the Earth. And one other thing, all volcanoes and geysers are extremely hot. So always keep a safe distance and admire them from afar. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did. And I hope you are learning so much with me. I will see you back here next time. Enjoy your activities today.